Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at IFRS 9. Specifically, we're going to look at an example for forward contract designated as a cash flow hedge. This topic is covered in an international accounting course, the CPA exam, as well the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram as I'm trying to increase my following. And this is my Facebook account. I do have a Gumroad account and I do have a website. On my website, if you choose to, you can post, you can donate to support the channel. Also on my website, I do have offers. For example, right now, Becker CPA is offering a discount on their CPA course. It's a limited offer with unlimited access. So let's go ahead and do a quick review about the fair value for hedging. For fair value, once we say the forward contract, the hedging instrument has to be reported at fair value, it means we have a profit and a loss to have to worry about. So remember, we said if you're a speculator, arbitra uh, 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 participating in an arbitrage or a gambler, basically you want to buy and sell those contract, all the gains and losses, all the profit goes into the income statement. If you are protecting your assets or liabilities or protecting your cash flow, basically looking into the future to see how you can protect your asset, then under those circumstances, you would either treat the hedge as a fair value hedge, which will go on the income statement, any fair value changes, or you would treat it as a cash flow hedge, which will go into OCI. In this session, we will focus on the OCI. And if you recall from the prior session, we looked at the journal entries. We just looked at the fair value. I'm not going to go over this today. I'm going to go over the cash flow hedge. So with the cash flow hedge, at the end of the period, the hedged asset or the liability is adjusted to fair value according to the change in the spot exchange rate and the foreign exchange gain or loss rec and the gain and loss recognized in their income. So this is what we have to do. Then also we have to an amount equal to the foreign exchange gain or loss. So if you have a gain, you have to report a loss. If you have to rep if you reported a loss here, you have to report a gain here. If you reported a gain here, a gain in step one, you have to report a loss in step two. And you will see how we're going to work an example. An amount equal to the foreign exchange gain or loss recognized in net income and then transferred. And you will see how to accumulated OCI to offset any gain or loss on the hedged item, asset, or liability. We will see how in an example. The derivative hedging instrument is adjusted to fair value. Then we have then we have now a hedging instrument. It could be an asset. It could be a liability. Then we have to put it on the balance sheet with the counterpart recognized as a change in OCI. Then if we have an asset, then we have a gain in OCI. If we have a liability, we have a loss in OCI. And we'll see this shortly. And an additional amount is removed from OCI and recognized in net income to reflect two things. The current period amortization of the original discount. So if we have any discount on the forward contract, which we will work with a discount, we'll have to amortize it. Or if we have a premium, we'll amortize the premium. And the change in the time value of the option if the option is a hedging instrument. And also we amortize this part. So the best way to illustrate these concepts is to work an actual example. So let's take a look at an example where we work earlier with no hedging. If you remember, Exim Co. shipped goods to a Spanish customer with the payment to be received March 1st. Assume that December 1st, the spot rate is $1.50, but December 31st, the euro was $1.51. So here's, here's what we did in the prior session. We debit the receivable, credited sales, $1.5 million. You said once we credit the sales, we never change the sale. At the end of the accounting period, we debit account receivable and we credit for an exchange gain. So by the end of the year, we were plus 10,000 of the receivable and plus 10,000 of the gain because the euro was $1.51. By the time we got the payment, what happened is the euro went down to $1.48. Therefore, we debited an exchange loss for an exchange loss for 30,000, credited the receivable 30,000. Then we accepted the cash 1,450,000 and credited the account receivable 1,450. So all in all, we had losses of 20,000. So keep that number in mind. And under this example, we had no protection. We had no forward contract or option contract. Well, in the next, now we're going to be looking at what if this company, Exim Co., buy a forward contract and treated that forward contract as a cash flow hedge. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the, the, the new information and we'll work this example. So keep in mind, just have to remember what happened here in order to appreciate the value of the hedge. Okay, 
Now, assume on December 1st, when we make that sale, a three-year three year forward contract for euros is at uh, uh, 0.485, and the company signs a contract with First National Bank to deliver 1 million in three months in exchange for 1,480,000. Now, what Axiom Co. wanted to do, said, you know what, we're not going to wait until March 1st and be surprised with any nasty surprises. What's going to happen is we're going to buy a forward contract to sell the 1 million euros at $1.48. So the bank says, I will buy your euro at $1.4850. Although the euro today is $1.50. So notice the first thing, you are willing to take less money. You are willing to lose upfront $15,000. Okay. So no change, no, no cash changes hands on December 1st. So because the amount of the contract is so minimal, so we don't have to worry about this. So the euro is selling at a discount because it's selling less. So Axkimo will receive $15,000 less than the payment if they receive the goods today. So if they receive the goods today, they would receive 1.5 million. Now they are guaranteed from the bank 1,485. Therefore, they took a discount. They took a reduction in the cash flow. So this reduction in the cash flow is technically a cost of doing business in a foreign currency. So when you deal with foreign currency, you have a risk. And that risk is currency. Uh, well, currency is spelled. I'm not going to change it, but yes. So this $15,000, and we're going to see what we're going to do with this. This is basically an expense, and this expense will be amortized, and we'll see how we're going to amortize it. Okay? Given that the future spot rate turns out to be only $1.48, now we know what this future spot, spot rate is. Selling euros at a forward rate of $1.48, dollar for 1.485 is obviously better so now we know after the fact that it was a good option selling the euros at 1.485 and accepting the discount because if we did not we would have sold them at dollar 48 but now this is beside you know you know this is like seeing in the future which is you don't but i'm just telling you up front that we are five we're going to be five thousand dollar off by 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 going into this forward contract Okay, so this can be viewed as a gain resulting from the use of the forward contract. So hopefully, I hope you can see this. I hope that you can see up front, we didn't go into the journal entries, that we did good by entering into this contract. But you don't know how good or how bad until down the road, but now we know the future here. Okay, so what's going to happen? We must account for the foreign currency transaction and the related forward contract simultaneously but separately. So notice in the entries we're going to be doing now, we're going to be taking care of the receivable and taking care of the forward contract. So we basically have two different instruments and we have to account for them differently. Now, how do we account for them? Depending on the changes in interest rate, depending on the changes, not in interest rate, depending on the changes in the foreign currency transaction. So let's go over this uh, information here in this table we're, because we're gonna be using this information to process the journal entry. So you can copy this information down if you went to my website and if you happen to download it, that's good. That's a good idea. So here's where we stand here, December 1st, year one. The spot rate is $1.50. So we have a receivable of 1.5 million. The forward rate, this is when we bought the forward rate, is 1.485. So there's no change in fair value on that date. On December 31st, year one, the spot rate is $1.51. The receivable is going to go up by 10,000. So the receivable will go up by 10,000. We'll have a gain. The forward rate is 1.496. 1 now the forward rate went up. Well, we made a mistake. We made a mistake buying the forward rate on December 1st. If we waited till December 31st, the forward rate would have been 1.496. So what happened here, if you notice, we, we made a mistake in what sense? It's the forward rate went up. It means we should have waited. We have technically a loss. So basically, if you look at the difference between those two, it's 11 pennies. 11 pennies times a million that's an $11,000 in loss on the forward contract, on the forward contract. Now we did good on the, um, the, the, the spot rate helped us, but the forward contract went, uh, went the opposite way. Okay. So basically we have a loss of 11,000. Why do you say the loss is only the fair value negative 10,783? Because what we do is we take the loss and we discount the loss and we're going to discount the loss at 12%. It doesn't matter. So the discounted loss is 10,783, but think of it as 10,000. It doesn't matter. So the fair value of the con of the forward contract went down to negative 10,783. March 1st, the spot rate was $1.48. And when the spot rate is $1.48, the forward rate at that point will be $1.48 too. So now, now the receivable is 1,480,000. We are at a loss of 30,000 because by December 31st, the receivable was 1,510,000. Now it went down 30,000. We are at a loss for the receivable of 30,000. 
the forward rate and the spot rate are the same because this is what you're going to execute the transaction and what happened is now the change in fair value now now because you saved yourself because if you waited if you waited um, you would have get dollar 48 the spot rate but you're going to get 1.485 so you're going to get a five thousand dollar increase in your fair value so the change in fair value so you went from negative ten thousand seven eighty three up to five thousand so you moved the fact the change in your fair value is fifteen thousand seven eighty three so you moved up fifteen thousand seven eighty three because by december on december 31st the fair value of the hedge right here was negative negative 10,783 the fair value of the hedge by the time you realize the transaction you you book the transaction it was 5,000 so it went up 10 uh, 5,000 I'm sorry the change is 15,783 so you are at a gain of $5,000 why are you again at $5,000 because instead of getting 1,480 you get 1,485 okay so let's take a look at the at the transaction from uh, from a journal entry perspective so the first entry is pretty straightforward we debit account receivable credit sales on december 31st when we made the sale there is no formal entry for the forward contract no no cash changes hand it has a zero value as of 12 1 year one so the forward contract has no value although we went we sign that contract now let's go ahead and start to look at the journal at, at the journal entries What's going to happen is this the first thing we have to do on december 31st we have to report this receivable at fair value so you remember the receivable at fair value we made a ten thousand dollar gain because the value of the euro is dollar 51. okay so notice this is to account for the receivable now we have to account for the forward contract if we made the gain here what did i tell you what's going to happen to the forward contract the forward contract will have a loss so it's like the opposite and that's why it's called the hedging so a gain will offset a loss so what's going to happen we're going to have a loss on a forward contract and we're going to put that in accumulated other comprehensive income so notice the gain and the loss if, if you notice here we have a gain of ten thousand a loss of ten thousand so what happened on the income statement the effect is zero okay th that's what we mean by hedging that's what we had you. Then we have to create a liability. We have to create a, now we have to put the the contract, the fair value contract. So we're gonna get it out of, we're gonna get, we're gonna get it out of OCI, we're gonna debit OCI, get this credit out, and credit a forward contract. Now the forward contract is a liability. Now we have a liability and a loss because when we do, when we debit accumulated other comprehensive income, this is basically a loss when we debit it. Therefore, what's going to happen, we debit a loss and, and we, we created a liability. And that's what happened. But notice, no income statement effect from this transaction. And whatever income statement happened, it zeroed out. So notice we have a gain, we have a loss. And here, this is no income statement effect. So simply what I'm trying to say, this is a cash flow hedge. Nothing is affecting the income statement. Although we kind of booked 10,000, then we reduced it by 10,000. So this 10,000 here gain was reduced by the loss. And this is what we mean by the hedge by the cash flow hedge it just it eliminate the loss would eliminate the gain as far as the income statement is concerned okay then what we have to do the last thing we have to do we have to amortize you remember the fifteen thousand dollar discount i told you it's a part of doing business now we're going to amortize it we're going to debit discount expense and credit accumulated other comprehensive income so we booked the fifteen thousand in oci and now we're releasing some of it from oci to the income to the income statement so those are the entries that we book on december 31st we do the fair value of the receivable we offset it by if it's a gain we offset it by a loss then we transfer then we if it's a loss if, if there's a loss we have to put the loss in oci therefore we debit oci credit the forward oops, credit the forward contract now if we had again everything would be the opposite obviously then we have to we have to record the discount okay so basically think of this this is separate than all of them this is separate than the other three transactions so this is what we did and this is what how things will show on the income statement for year one we have a sales of 1.5 million a gain of 10,000 a, lo a loss of 10,000 so notice those gain and losses offset each other out zero the only expense we're going to have on the income statement is the discount expense which is happens to come from the fifteen thousand uh, dollar discount now you might be saying why five thousand and $17 they use the discount rate that the company want just they could 
they could do this on a straight line basis. They basically, they can take 15,000 and divide it by how many months the uh, discount is for. But here they use, they used a, uh, a formula, which is, you don't have to know it. Just know that the 15th of the 15,000 discount on the, on the forward contract, $5,017 is expensed. So this is the impact on the income statement. What is the impact on the balance sheet? On the balance sheet, we report the asset, the receivable at fair value, and we have a liability called the forward contract. This is a liability. This is the hedge, the liability, 10783 and retained earning is $1,494,983, which is net income for that year from the sale minus the discount. And remember the loss, the true loss is sitting in here. This is the loss, but the loss is on an OCI. Notice there is no loss on the income statement. Any loss is offset by the gain. Any gain is offset by the loss. The, the, the expense is different. The expense is not a loss. The expense is, it's, it is like a loss, but it's not, it's not a loss. Okay, so this is the this is how things would look like on on December 31st. Okay, back to this picture. So so far we took care of this 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 section here. We did the entries for this, which was very simple. Then we did the entries for the second line. Let me highlight it in a different color. Then we just did the end. What what, what needs to be happen on December 31st? The last thing we have to do is we have to book the entries that took place on March 1st. So let's go ahead and look at these entries. On March 1st, we're going to have, we're going to have the first thing we're going to have to report the receivable at fair value, the receivable lost. So we have a $30,000 loss. So we have to credit receivable at 30,000 debit foreign exchange loss. Now you might say why? Because the spot rate is $1.48. So that's the loss. Remember, any loss on the receivable will be offset by a gain. So the loss by the receivable is offset by a gain. Again, so let me get my pen back. This is how hedging works. So the loss on the receivable is offset by a gain on the forward contract. So we credit the gain and we debit OCI. We debit OCI 30,000. Then we get it out of OCI 15,783 and we debit the forward contract. Now we have to remove the liability because that's it. The contract is over. Remember, we had a liability of 15,783 in the prior from the prior entry now we have to remove the liability and it offset OCI now you're going to see what's going to happen to OCI hopefully you are keeping track of your OCI then what we have to do is we have to discount we have to amortize the remaining of the discount remember this is part of the 15,000 we debit discount credit OCI so let me show you what happened to OCI the balance in OCI started at 4,234, then negative 30,000, then plus 15,783, plus 9,983. Overall, OCI is zero. So if you look at OCI, OCI is going to be gone as a result of these transactions. So we parked in there the gains and the losses, then OCI, then the amortization of the discount, then it's, it's all gone. So on March 1st, we debit foreign currency, we credit receivable, then we debit cash, we can combine those two entries because notice we can take the foreign currency out. Okay, so we debit cash. This is how much cash we receive. The account receivable is one million four hundred and eighty, and we we credit the forward contract. What's left of that liability of five thousand, and basically this is the gain component of the whole transaction. This is the gain component. So this is to settle the transaction, and this is what things would look like in year two. We have a foreign exchange loss on the receivable. We have a gain on the on the forward contract. Again, the hedged item and the hedged instrument, they work the opposite. When one has a loss, the other one has a gain. The only thing we have a discount, the, the only expense that we're going to report related to that transaction is the, remember the $15,000 of expense in the first year, we amortized 5,017. And now in the following year, we amortize 9,983. Therefore, we amortize all the 15,000 of the discount. So the impact on their income is 9,983. It's coming from an expense, not gains or losses. So all in all, okay, the net effect on the balance sheet over the two year period, okay? So overall, the net effect, after all things said and done, we have 1,485 in cash. So cash went up by that much and a corresponding, obviously retained earning went up by that much, okay? So this is on the balance sheet. The cumulative discount is 15,000, which is was broken down into two years, 5,000, 17 year one, and 9,983 in year two. So this is the 15,000. 
Okay, the net benefit of entering under this contract is five thousand dollar because we received five thousand dollar. Then we would we wouldn't have to receive if we waited for the spot rate without any protection. So, Eximco has a cash inflow of one million four hundred eighty-five rather than one million four hundred eighty, and this is where the five thousand of the gain comes into place. So the gain is reflected in net income as the difference between the net gain on forward contract and the cumulative discount which is 20,000 minus 15, recognized over two period. Why recognized over two period? Because we have to amortize the discount over two periods. Now, hopefully, you know, you were able to follow this. The best way to do this, if you're not sure, create T accounts. So create T accounts for every account that you create and see what happened to them as they get, as they disappear or as they increase and they decrease. But this is how you would record or this is how you would account for a forward contract uh, cash flow hedge forward contract and this is a cash flow hedge and the next example will work the same example however we're going to look at it from a fair value hedge what does that mean it means all the gains and the losses that will affect net income and you will see how it works if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures please consider donating good luck on your cpa exam and use all the resources that i provide you to pass and see you on the other side of success